I was raised as an atheist. When I was 15, I started asking questions. Why are we here? I wanted a simple life. So I read the Bible again and again and again. Some bits like a hundred times. I went to several churches and what I saw, it was not practicing what was written in their book. Like you have the Bible, the Old Testament, and then the Gospels, and then you have this whole bunch of other stuff, which seems to say a different message to all the stuff that's in there before. And it seems to put a different twist on it. And it wasn't Jesus saying these things, peace be upon him. Islam is not for just a bunch of intellectuals. It's for everybody. It's not just for the Imam, it's for the whole of humanity. Worshipping him, the way he told us to worship him. I checked out Islam, I believed it was the truth, and Alhamdulillah, became a Muslim. In Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, he was salatu was salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God Almighty be upon you. I'd like to invite onto the stage Brother Omar Dexter from the UK. Brother Omar Dexter comes from Derby in the United Kingdom. He reverted to Islam approximately six years ago. He graduated in physics from Nottingham University in 1998. Brother Omar worked in the automotive industry for companies such as BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover and Ford as a scientist and manager. After returning from Hajj three years ago, he became the vice chairman of his local mosque in Rugby, UK. He's involved in various charity work and also many consultative roles. He enjoys exercise, especially mountaineering and amateur gymnastics. And also having spent some time with him throughout the conference, I can attest to the fact that he also has a very cheeky sense of humor. So inshallah, I'd like to invite for his talk today, which is entitled, How I Came to Islam, by Brother Omar Dexter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you've said I've got a cheeky sense of humor. Thanks for the introduction. Jazakallah. Now the question I think you all want to ask to start with is what's the hardest thing about coming to Islam? Is it the prayers, the fasting, the hajj? If it's compulsory upon you. The truth is, is that it's eating curry for breakfast. That's the hardest thing. There's nothing else. There's no other hardship in Islam. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I'm honored to be invited here to speak. I feel a little bit out of my depth. Alhamdulillah. Islam is not for just a, a bunch of intellectuals. It's for everybody. It's not just for the Imam. It's for the whole of humanity. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, that's what Allah would want. What does God want for us? He wants the best of things for us. He wants us to be united on the truth. Worshipping Him the way He told us to worship Him. Living together in peace with each other. Inshallah. And people think so hard about marriage. They're looking for perfection. Too fat, too thin, two eyes, two ears. How much more should we consider the eternal resting place of our soul? Do we want to be in paradise for an eternity? Acha! In paradise for eternity? Inshallah! Acha! Do we want to be in hell, a place of torment? Torment for an eternity? It's quite a while. Nay! The stakes couldn't be higher. Okay then, I'll give you the short version of my story. I checked out Islam. I believed it was the truth, and Alhamdulillah, I became a Muslim. What? It's not fair. It's not, I'm being heckled now from the audience. Alhamdulillah, that's more like it. That's what I wanted. MashaAllah. I was raised as an atheist. Now that means that you don't believe in any God. And to be honest, I was a very naughty boy. 
I was always fighting and coming home with letters from the school complaining about me. But my dad, he was like the Kung Fu instructor, so it was okay. He'd just say, did you win? I'd say, yeah. I said, that's okay then. No problem. Mafe muskila. It was a life of melting things, letting down tires, tying knots in things. Then you'd want like a wet towel, you know, where you can like do this and make it like a whip. It was like that as well. I said it was very naughty. But I don't do that stuff anymore. Maybe except for the towel, only above the waist. And uh, while it's on camera, I just want to say, Mickey, I'm so sorry about your swimming trunks. It was me. So, inshallah, Allah will forgive me now, I said it, inshallah. I did what I thought was right. And that was based upon my personal opinions and what society around me found acceptable. Looking back now, it doesn't seem like a very smart move. I was never a trouble starter, but always seemed to be like the trouble finisher. And it was not necessarily a proportional response. As we see today in the world, little things, big response. $5,000 bombs being dropped on $5 tents. Not a proportional response. Not that price is an issue. Anyway, what I saw around me was very bad. And I questioned society. All are telling lies, drinking alcohol, girlfriends instead of wives. So many people breaking their promises and not caring when they broke their promises. There's one thing to say inshallah with intention and another one to say it out of habit with no intention. It's a difference. When I was 15, I started asking questions. The kind of questions like, why are we here? I think around the world a lot of people do this. I was not the only person. I wanted a simple life. And I wondered why the world was in such a mess. So I read the Bible. And I didn't want it to be true when I started. I just thought, I'll check out religion with an open mind. But I was really looking for a simple life. And I'm thinking, if I can eliminate religion, Alhamdulillah. It's one less thing to worry about. That's what I thought before I read it. But I was also seeking for guidance, a set of standards. Is it just me who did what I thought? What I thought was right based upon my opinions, which were probably based upon the society around me? It didn't seem very smart. So I read the Bible again and again and again some bits like a hundred times. Now I'm not like Dr. Zakir Naik, I can't tell you the chapter and the verse, but I pretty much know what's in there. So don't, if it comes to any questions, I don't think we've got time today, but another day if it comes to questions, I'll just talk in general. So the detailed stuff, somebody else does that, inshallah. And I got very scared. I got so scared because I realized I've been behaving in a way which was not acceptable to God. And it was not on, no more towel whipping. Letting tires down, it's my fault. I've got to pay the price. As well as the melting stuff and the knots. I did believe that the Bible contained some truth, even though upon reading it, and I was the kind of person that reads it, like I've got a calculator with me, and it's saying various numbers, and, and it's not quite matching up, and I'm, I'm, and I'm typing them in and seeing if it makes sense. But even with the contradictions, and inconsistencies, like parts which don't seem to match, I still thought it was the truth. I thought, I can't ignore this book. So I reformed my character. And at the same time, my family, they had a spiritual awakening.